okay two effects that uh, <coughs> I said we will discuss in this class are this <coughs> ground effect on control force requirement or the stick force requirement and <coughs> other one is in maneuver what happens okay so force requirement in maneuvers or elevator elevator deflection uh, requirement right so uh, of course uh, uh, if you remember we said that uh, uh, ground effect will only take place when we are trying to land right and when you are trying to land you are actually trying to slow down how do you slow down? Increase the angle of attack, right? Perfect landing is when you are landing at stall. Landing at touching down at stall is the perfect landing condition. So ground effect will take place. Or let's say I'll say ground effect while landing. two things which can happen we said that downwards is going to be less right much less and <coughs> that is going to That is going to reduce this quantity, isn't it? Right? And when this quantity reduces, then this location is goes aft, right? So if uh, this was my X and P in air. Okay, with no ground effect, then the new X and P will lie somewhere here. <coughs> Close to ground. Okay. So I'll I'll write this. Uh, no ground effect and ground effect G E for ground effect right. So if your C G is fixed what is increasing because of this static margin so stability is more right and look at this picture. So you are able to trim at some angle of attack in air right this is alpha trim this is no ground effect right. No ground effect what happens when I am including the ground effect in this this curve will have steeper slope right. So that means you have to make up for this extra delta C m to trim at this alpha isn't it and that will require what I am trying to make up for this delta C m right this is with
with ground effect right so i have to make up for this delta cm to trim at this alpha right what uh, you have to do We are trimming, right? We always trim. Isn't it? We are trying to make up for this delta C M, which has happened because of the ground effect. What is going to change? What we have to do? we have to apply more elevated deflection right in which direction which direction so you are at some alpha right let's say elevator uh, alpha is positive so elevator deflection is up isn't it now you want to make up for this you have to move your elevator further up isn't it because you want to create a pitch up moment all right so <coughs> elevator deflection right it's also clear from this this trimming condition isn't it if i want to keep this alpha fixed cm alpha has gone up so i, have, I will need more delta e right more delta e of all right what is the second effect so there is one effect what is the second effect remember we are talking about only one effect so far there is the derivative of the down wash angle with respect to angle of attack right what is the other effect left will because the loop is closed right so the circulation changes epsilon not no this epsilon has to terms right right so angle of attack at the tail is also going to increase and what happens because of that less elevator is fixed at some point right and then you have this epsilon not which is increasing the angle of attack at the tail right so there is a i am getting a elevator up means more left downward that is giving me a pitch up moment because of which i am getting a different alpha trims right more angle of attack is when elevator is up and the lift produces the tail is down isn't it now because of this term which disappears when you are close to ground angle of attack at the tail is going to increase right
right and that small delta lt right is going to create a downward pitching moment so further elevator up you require isn't it so in both the situations right combined effect is that you have to no you need more and more elevator to change the or to maintain the same angle of attack and also to if you want to change the velocity you now when you are landing landing speed has to be lower isn't it so you are on approach with some velocity and then when you are trying to land this speed has to go to further small actually it should be we stall right <coughs> into some factor so more and more elevator and this is up all the time because when i am landing i have to maintain this alpha which is close to alpha stall I want to see the plot how elevated deflection requirement changes for level flight trim at constant speed okay let's talk about only level flight trim condition and then let's plot the effect of the ground effect right and i'm plotting this against x cg over c bar so typically this the x cg is no uh, this plot where <coughs> uh, the textbook from where i have got this plot they are measuring xcg from the wing aerodynamics center okay so this cg is measured so this this is a, these two should be parallel okay 
So this plot is the plot of elevator required to trim the airplane in level flying condition okay at constant speed right with respect to the CG location. No J G right. How will the plot for uh, uh, stick force gradient will look like? Qualitatively, it will look something like the same as this, right? Because the elevator is directly related to the stick force. So we are going to apply the stick force and the corresponding elevator diffraction we see right. So this is a, a, the effect of the proximity of ground when the aircraft is trying to take off or trying to land right. Let us look at uh, another uh, effect and that is maneuver what happens in maneuvers so what is a maneuver maneuver is when you are trying to uh, even landing is a maneuver okay so uh, uh, any any flight will be called maneuver uh, but uh, here in this We are talking about uh, the case when the rates are also involved, right? So there are maneuvers where uh, rates are all fixed, right? Steady state uh, maneuvers, for example, level time, level flight condition, all the rates are zero, right? Even in landing, the rates are all zero, right? And taking off, but uh, there are maneuvers where rates are not zero. So, for example. There is one maneuver which is called pull up maneuver, okay. What all I need to have? For this aircraft to pull up, so you want to create an acceleration. No? A normal acceleration upward, which should be equal to. So there's a weight, and this is your lift L, right? So you can pull a. Uh, uh, you can do this maneuver only when the lift is going to be more than the weight right that is clear and that uh, ratio is called the load factor right. So if I want to write down an expression for this n and let us say I want to do a pull up maneuver this is signifying the g factor right. So 1 g is pulling 1 g maneuver which is 
the case when you are flying level uh, flight condition any other uh, value of n greater than 1 will also give you a normal acceleration right. So what is this n, n is L minus W right over M if M is the mass of the aircraft. W is equal to mg right so this is <coughs> so these are normal acceleration in any uh, maneuver and also say that this radius is r of this loop and how is happening how is happening how you are able to pull up so you are trying to apply the elevator so that you can create a pitch rate right and that is going to take this up right and you can do it at constant velocity so let us say velocity is constant okay it is happening because of this pitch rate right. What is this pitch rate? Is two pi so that's like a distance, right? Two pi is the angular displacement over time, right? Correct. I can also write this Q in terms of this acceleration and that is right centripetal acceleration is this. pull up maneuver at constant velocity right at this load factor this is how pitch rate is related to the load factor and the velocity okay what this pitch rate is going to do to the aircraft no i am trying to rotate the aircraft right what is it going to do now i have to find out uh, the control requirement right that is what we are discussing longitudinal control so in such a maneuver what is happening when we are pitching the aircraft No, delta E is there, delta E is going to give a pitch rate. Oh. Yes, <coughs> that is all right. Any other thing? Anything else happening because of this pitch rate? Yeah. 
Angle of attack? Where? Angle of attack is going to change. Where? Let us say I am, I am, I am giving a, a delta E which is causing a pitch rate, right? Because of that, what is changing? Angle of attack is the right answer. Where is changing? In what ways? <coughs> so you are creating a moment about this CG, which is pitching up positive Q, right? And let's <coughs> look at what is happening to the flow at the tail. Okay, so I'll draw it as a symmetric airfoil. What is it going to do? So when you are pitching the aircraft, aircraft is this tail is going to see a relative velocity upward, isn't it? Right? Do you see that? The aircraft is pitching up. Right, so tail is going down, and tail is going to push the air down. So relative air that is coming onto the tail is going to increase, isn't it? Let us say aircraft is flying trim, uh, this level uh, trim condition. Okay. And now you want to initiate a pitch up, right? So what you are going to do? You are going to apply elevator, elevator up, right? And that is going to so, so that that Q no, how much Q you want depending on that you will deflect elevator right. Afterwards what happens this starts going down right if this so earlier it was only having this velocity which was forward velocity let us say V right yes even in, even slow motion it will be perpendicular to the uh, edge. I mean, to this thing. Yeah, what is what I say? I'm saying that if you fix an elevator, mm -hmm. even the elevator will go in slow motion. I mean, uh, we have to. <coughs> so you're saying the angle of touch changing due to the chain camber? Yeah. No, this is this is this is not due to the camber. This is only due to the pitch rate. This is only due to the pitch rate. Yeah. Camber is not, I am not saying the camber is changing. Okay. I deflected the elevator afterwards, I see a pitch rate, and then because of that pitch rate, this elevator, uh, this tail starts pushing air down. So, you see a relative air upward, and because of that, the angle of attack at the tail is changed, right. Yeah, right. Vertical component of velocity will change, which was not there, right. So, what is that velocity? Let us say I call this W Q into LT, right. So, delta alpha is going to be.
let us say this is u0 right is it all right you see that it is going to change only in this maneuver right so what will happen to the stick force now so fs is Now I am writing this modified alpha t right and this will include the effect of the pitching. And I want to replace this Q by this quantity so that I directly have a relation between the stick force and the load factor right. While you are doing that you should also non dimensionalize it okay. So this is how uh, the rate is non dimensionalized. right there is a non dimensional pitch rate So I am calling this u naught. So u naught is equal, actually equal to v, right? So v is equal to u naught. So n minus one over g into two So if you remember I wrote this expression for Fs at so this is pitch control force <coughs> required Pitch control force required at constant speed and constant normal acceleration, right? And this normal acceleration will depend upon the load factor that we are trying to overcome, right? This is uh, uh, above the level flight condition, right? So more than one g, whatever that normal acceleration is, and in terms of.
aircraft parameters I wrote this expression in the last class and uh, we also found the control force gradient and the control force per g that is given by this Both C1 and C2 are functions of no, all derivatives of aircraft. We have seen aerodynamic derivatives, right? We have seen control derivatives Cm delta E, stability derivative Cm alpha, and there is one more derivative which is <coughs> damping derivative, okay. So now if you want to look at the trim condition which is CMCG is equal to 0 that will have one more term and that is the CMQ okay and CMQ is the damping derivative stability damping control right now let's say i want to find out what is the elevator requirement for no per g okay how much elevator uh, I need to get uh, the normal acceleration that also can be found out and so there are two, two conditions one is one uh, equation one and the second one is this has to be equal to this is the lift coefficient right and this is equal to lift is equal to and w right Yeah. 
So whenever you have a rate involved, okay, there will be damping uh, created, right? Air will also try to damp out the motion. In the post stall regime of flight, it will be linear. Okay, we all we are uh, in this whole course. We are actually talking about pre-stall conditions, right? Uh, it may not be uh, linear in the post stall angle of attack. Okay, so if you solve one and two, you can find out what is elevator required. for the normal acceleration that you want right and that is given by this derivative remember this uh, uh, these these uh, terms c1 and c2 they are not constants okay they are depending upon derivatives So I also put a bar here because I am talking about which one? Yeah, if I if I want to, uh, let's say, see, the unit of each of these terms should be a constant, right? So that is how you have to look at. It. Okay, so small delta uh, d delta e over d and uh, what does it mean? Small elevator deflection required to create large acceleration, right? Isn't it? But such an aircraft will not be easy to fly you deflect elevator little bit and it gives you a large acceleration. So it is not uh, easy to fly such an uh, aircraft small So such an aircraft is not uh, easy to handle. It's not desired. Yeah. Uh, minus of this whole term. So this is also called elevator angle per g. Location of the CG when this becomes 0 gives you what is called stick fixed maneuver point. Right, there is a CM alpha term sitting here 
which is related to x cg minus something right. So location of cg when this term becomes 0 that is the point which is called stick fixed maneuver point. Location of CG Where do you think this will lie? So, I will quickly give you an expression for MP is for maneuver point, okay. This quantity is usually positive, okay. And CMQ, what should it be? Positive damping means what? Air is going to offer some damping when you are trying to rotate the aircraft, right. So, what should this quantity be? This should be negative. Think about it. How we are writing the equation? We are writing equation as m equal to and so on, right? So there will be a term like i q dot, right? So if you bring this to this side, it becomes right. And for positive damping, you should have CMQ which is negative, right. So, this maneuver point actually lies behind the neutral point, right. That is what it means. You have this part which is positive, right. So, XMP, which is the maneuver point, is lying behind the neutral point location. Right. What does it mean? You can be unstable, but still you can maneuver, isn't it? So marginal stability case when your <laughs> CG is lying very close to the stick fist neutral point, you can still maneuver because in maneuver you have increased stability. Right. Okay, we will stop at this point. Okay.